Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. Today, we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be doing a product review. We're gonna be reviewing the Imaginarium 3.7 gallon tank, nano tank. And so we're gonna go ahead and unbox it, set it up, and give you our final thoughts and opinions. So stay tuned. So what we're looking at here is the Imaginarium Deluxe Freshwater Aquarium. It is a 3.7 gallon all-in-one tank. It includes the filter, the light, the only thing additional we had to purchase is the heater and of course anything that we put in it like substrate, plants, and fish. So this is going in the upstairs office area next to the five and a half gallon. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox this thing. We'll show you what's in it and set it up. All right, so let's go ahead and open this thing, see what's in it. And as we open the box, we have an aquarium, imagine that. And first thing we see, we have a white flat box, which I'm assuming is the lid to the aquarium. There it is, it's one piece. This is kind of nice. We've got a feeding hole, a way to get this off pretty easily. It appears to be glass, so that'll be nice. Makes it easier to clean than plastic. It'll be a lot less likely to scratch as well. So that's the lid. Next, we have another white box. And as we open this up, we have some bubble wrap. Yay for bubble wrap, that'll be fun to pop later on. Put that aside, and in here, oh, we have the light. So this is the LED light. Now we are planning to try and grow some plants, and so one of the experiments we're going to do over the next few weeks to few months is see if this little light can grow some low light plants, things like water wisteria, possibly some Anubias, maybe some Java Fern, maybe even some Jungle Bell if we get adventurous. So we've got the light and we have the plug. It is a two prong plug, so that'll make it easier uh, when it comes to plugging this thing into an extension cord or whatever you need to do. So nice looking light. It looks, I mean, it's mostly plastic, but it looks pretty good. So we'll see what that looks like when it's actually on the tank. Back here, we have another white box. And so inside of this box, it looks like we have some filtration pieces. So this looks like it is the hose that is going to, or the, the yeah, the hose that's gonna to lead to the inner part of the tank. It's got a little outflow here. So we've got these two pieces. We have some brackets. Then there is a cord, and it looks like our pump. And so this is the Aqua One pump. So this little bitty guy here, it'll be interesting to see if this is enough to actually run the system. Uh, we're gonna find out. It is only three, like I said, 3.7 gallons. So this pump may be enough. Uh, just by looking at it, I sort of have my doubts, but maybe I'll be surprised. So this is the pump. Okay, next, what is in the magic box? Well, this is nice, we've got directions. And so the directions are gonna tell us how to do this. I'm a dude, probably won't look at it. Finally, we get to pull out the actual aquarium. It is glass, it's actually pretty heavy. We don't need that anymore. So here it is. Uh, you can see it does have a base on the bottom to kind of lift it up. It's a, it's a wood base. And then we've got a nice black background here that appears to be plastic. If we look in the back, we've got a sponge in the second compartment. compartment. Uh, we have what appears to be some type of bio ball, perhaps. Kind of cool. And then exterior to that, we have carbon and some floss. Not a big fan of carbon. I probably won't use this, or if I do, it'll be temporary. In fact, I won't use this because if we're gonna be putting plants in the tank, carbon will remove all of your fertilizers. So this is something I will not use. What I will wind up doing is replacing this with some used filter floss to automatically cycle the tank. So filter floss will go in that compartment, but we won't use this. So just a tip. If you ever get one of these tanks and you wanna put plants in, get rid of this carbon insert. It will not be necessary. 
But this is kind of nice where we have these, little, like I said, the surface area to grow bacteria. So that will definitely be useful. So we're gonna go ahead and start assembling this thing. Perhaps what's gonna be the most frustrating part of this kit is we need to get this pump and this elbow through that little tiny hole that we see right over here. So the best way that I can think of to make this work after trying a couple times off camera is to go ahead and put this end, the longer end into the pump. And then we're gonna to have to kind of work our way into here so that it, the part goes through the hole first and then you just affix the pump to the side after you've gotten the piece to go through the opening to the other side. And so we're just gonna go up just like that, suction cup it right to the glass. And then this piece here, as I turn this around, is going to go right here in this hole. And then we can just go ahead and press this in here like this and then set this nozzle to whatever direction you want the flow. And that's about it. So I would recommend putting the hose piece on the pump first and then just kind of angling it in so that it eventually all fits together. But that is the pump. I, I'm gonna be uh, surprised to see how it functions. Again, such a small pump going through a piece of sponge filter and then also a piece of uh, almost like bio ball material, as I said. And so this piece here, that we see there's two compartments back here uh, in the back on this side and there are I don't know if we can see this with all the glare but there are ridges here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slide this in the first compartment here what it looks like is happening is on the bottom on the very bottom, and it's going to be again hard to see, but down here there's an opening and so the pump is going to be sucking water through all this media from the top of this area. It's going to go down through the bio balls, through filter floss that would be here, or the sponge, through this next compartment, up the bottom, and then out the top. So there's again quite a bit of space to do uh, filtration. So what's gonna happen next is the light is going to clamp on the back just like this, and then there are a couple of screws that will fasten it to the tank so that it doesn't fall off or fall over. Uh, the screws are seem to be sufficient. They're not exactly super rugged. So they got little plastic parts that you kind of screw, and I think if you were to do this too tightly, you'd probably run the risk of snapping one or both so we're gonna do this enough to keep the light on, being aware that these things are not necessarily the most rugged things in the world. And then we can go ahead and adjust this light. It's a little flimsy. Um, I think it's gonna work, but I could see this thing over time. Uh, you know, you can see here there's some play in it, and there really isn't a way to tighten that, so it is, Definitely not the most high quality light I've ever seen. The other problem that becomes very obvious after you begin to set up this tank is it doesn't really, let me go ahead and come from the side here, it really doesn't hang over this tank very far. So it goes just beyond the filter, uh, the, the filter area. This thing really should be a whole lot longer and it's not and so that's going to be a concern this is an incredibly cheap light in fact uh, the whole mechanism back here it looks like it's going to fall apart uh, i definitely think that there could be a massive improvement in the quality of this light looks like there is a power button up here at the top where you're going to be able to touch it and turn it on and off but the placement of the light is i would say very poor because this is where the tank ends and this is where the light is so you got this whole front area where there is going to be less light so if you're growing plants that's something to consider if this will even grow plants and that remains to be seen so that is definitely something that would uh, need to be improved so before we really get to the substrate and, and the decoration of this tank we've got this uh, Aquion mini heater, 10 watt. It's supposed to be good for up to five gallons. I'm not a huge fan of heaters that just are set at one temperature and that's all they do. Uh, these heaters tend to fail before the heaters with an adjustable thermostat. However, we've been using one of these in a 10 gallon and in a five and a half gallon 
in the upstairs part of our, our home and they've been working out okay so far for the last year. So I'm gonna, it was cheap, it was like 15 bucks. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. Now what we're gonna do with this heater is I am going to uh, place that in the back. And this is kind of a nice thing. Let me go ahead and cut this, this makes all kinds of noise. That's, this is one of the benefits of a setup like this is you're not going to see any of the filtration and you're not going to see any of the heaters, you're not gonna see really any of the cords. And so that's gonna give it a nice clean look compared to perhaps other tank setups. So what we have here, again, this is little tiny heater. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get everything set up and placed where I want it. And so one of the things that I typically do uh, before putting substrate and plants and everything else in the tank is kind of get the cords all unraveled and then this will go in the back so we can put this really anywhere i'm going to put it kind of next to the pump i think uh, just make sure it's down low enough stick it to the glass so it's down low enough so that we don't run into a problem if we ever have to uh, do a water change i mean that's one big thing when you're doing a water change if you do 25 percent and your heater's completely exposed that element gets hot and the heater can burn itself out so it, the light's in, the pump is in, the heater's in the back. You know, you can see the cords back here. Obviously that's not gonna be the case once we get everything cleaned up. So next step, we wanna deal with the substrate. And for that, we're going to be using uh, some black sand. This is Nat Geo sand that I had left over from a previous tank build. So we're just gonna go ahead and pour this in. It actually is pretty clean. So we're gonna go ahead and just some in here. With sand, I like to have yeah, at least an inch, inch and a half. We're going to go ahead and slope it towards the back. This is going to be tough to see. I'll get a little bit closer view here in a second. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pour a little bit more in. So that should be good. So I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like as we get a little bit closer here. So here we've got the sand. And again, I know it's hard, there's a lot of glare and I apologize for that, but uh, you can see here the sand is in. It's just again, Nat National Geo Black Sand. Next thing is I wanna get some rock work in here, just some natural uh, river rock, and then we'll get some water in and we will begin to look at uh, what kind of plants we want to add. All right, so what we're going to do here is go ahead and talk about the light a little bit. We put a decorative rock that we got from the aquatic experience in here. So if you touch the top of this light once, you get this blue light. I will say it's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's a nice night moonlight sort of appearance. And then we've got the brighter light. And again, uh, based on the light placement, I wasn't crazy about how far back it was but the light will be enough certainly to see the fish, whether or not it's gonna be enough to grow plants. Again, I don't hold out a ton of hope, but we're gonna find out here, like I said, in the next four to six weeks, whether or not this light can support even low light plants. But it's, it's this pretty slick feature, so um, there's a little bit dimmer setting, so you just touch the top to turn it on and off. And we're gonna go ahead and leave this light on uh, just so that we can see the rest of it as we go ahead and hardscape the thing. Okay, so we see we've got some water in this tank. We do have the decorative rock. The next step is we wanna add some plants. Again, I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of wisteria. Eventually it would grow way too large for this tank, but we'll just cut it back as we need to. Uh, it's something that we have readily available right now. So we're gonna go ahead and get some plants in here and we'll go ahead and get some used filter floss. I won't show you that part, but I'll just put the filter floss in the back so that we have an instantly cycled tank. And that's the important thing. So if you're looking to set up this tank for the first time ever, uh, first I would highly recommend you watch the video that I, I demonstrate how to set up a tank and it's part of a beginner's uh, series. So probably watch that before you jump into this, but we're gonna use the filter floss to go ahead and completely cycle this tank so that when we add fish in a few minutes that they're not gonna have any problems later on because of ammonia spikes or nitrite spikes. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and we'll check back. All right, so here we've got the tank, it's set up. Got water in it, everything is plugged in now. We've got the filter running, and I will say it is an incredibly quiet pump. I don't even hear it running. I know it is 
because we have a little bit of water flow and I would also say the water flow is looking very light. That may be good because a lot of people are going to be putting uh, bettas in these types of tanks and so having this uh, not be too strong is probably an advantage. I did put the water wisteria in here. Again, this is a large plant. It would grow way larger than this tank could support. However, right now it's small. It doesn't look quite right because as it gets orientated towards the light, it will begin to perk up and look more like a plant should look. So that's going to take a little bit of time uh, to get that right. So the next thing we got to do is we've got to add the fish that we got for this tank. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so here we have the fish. It is a white and blue betta. Very cool looking. My wife actually picked this out at the Greenwater Aquarius Society swap that we had today. We had a table there and while I was working the table, she came back with this little beauty and then wanted a tank for it. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see now she's got a collection of tanks as well. She's got this one and she's got the five and a half with some sparkling garamis. So now it's spreading. The multiple tank syndrome is spreading through the family. It started with me and then Luke got it and now my wife has it and this is how it starts. It starts with one little tank and then all of a sudden you see another fish you want and that requires another tank. Now the tanks may be smaller but it's happening and that's pretty cool because it makes it easier then for me to say oh I need one more tank in the basement. So there you have it. Beautiful fish. I think the tank will work out fairly well for this particular fish. Okay everyone, so we got the thing together. We love the betta fish. I think the wisteria is going to work out okay short term as long as we keep it trimmed. Now a little bit about the tank, some final thoughts. One, I do wish the light was higher, a higher quality construction. It looks a little bit flimsy. I don't know how that joint is going to do at the back that allows it to flex a little bit. I think long term that may be an issue. I'm not completely sold yet on the light's ability to grow plants, but we're going to bring you some updates in the next four to six weeks. I hope I'm dead wrong and that that thing is sufficient in growing some plants that have quite frankly grown in every single tank that we have, both relatively low light and some with a little bit higher light. So that wisteria, I put it in there because I think it's a plant that does really well in our water. And if it's not growing, it's because of the light. Next thing, the pump. The pump is incredibly small but it's effective for that size tank and it's really quiet. I also like the fact that there is a lot of space to put media in the back. And so we've got the sponge back there right now. We've got that, uh, that cartridge that has some bio balls in there. You can put a bag of bio balls in there and it would be more than enough space. And we were also able to put some filter floss in there. Again, right now it's used just to keep that tank cycled, but there's a lot of space back there. In some ways there might be even too much space. There's also an area back there so you can put a heater. So it's a nice clean look. It's a nice clean look because all you can see is the the return for the, the filter and so that's pretty nice. The glass seems to be high quality. I mean it, it had a decent amount of weight to it. I think the biggest areas of concern are going to be again that pump. How long is it going to last? Hopefully it lasts a long time. The light is certainly going to be uh, something that we have to keep an eye on. But overall I think it is a decent tank. Uh, I encourage you always to do your research and not only look at this one, but maybe uh, the flu ball tanks. I bought this tank myself, so uh, that's why I can give you an honest opinion. I think it's going to do okay. We'll see. I'll give you some updates in the future. So if you like this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.